Gorgeous mid-November day at Notre Dame Stadium as the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest visit the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, now fourth in the latest college football playoff rankings and celebrating Senior Day for this final game of the season. 27 seniors now being recognized on the field as we now join public address announcer Mike Collins for the introductions. A safety from Charlotte, North Carolina. Grad student with a degree in film, television, and theater. Meeting his parents, Mark and Felinda Farley. Number 41, Captain, the gentleman from North Carolina, Matthias Farley. A linebacker from Orange, California. And a grad student with a degree in management entrepreneurship. Meeting his parents, Joseph and Deborah Schmidt. Number 38, Captain Joe Schmidt. Technology Management and meeting his parents David Day and Miss Excitement Carol Boyd, number 91, Captain Sheldon Day. And an offensive lineman from Indianapolis, grad student with a degree in management consulting, meeting his parents Pam and Keith Martin. Number 72, Captain Nick Martin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2015 Notre Dame football seniors and their families. And almost appropriate to end on the Martins. Nick's parents, Pam and Keith, they have been through this before with older brother Zach. Some four senior days for them now in eight years of attending Notre Dame games and out for the final time of Notre Dame Stadium Tunnel. Here come the Irish in 2015. second unbeaten season at home in the last four years. And a big reason the Irish are in the national championship picture again is quarterback Deshaun Kaiser, who in just seven starts has turned into one of the elite quarterbacks in all of the country. He wants to make sure that they stay focused and win one for the senior class and keep their hopes alive of a national championship. They've got the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, huge underdogs coming out with a three and six record. The youngest team in the FBS. Demon Deacons lost 38 to nothing three years ago to help send Notre Dame to the top of the polls and then eventually to the national championship game, which they lost. And there is second year head coach for Wake Forest, Dave Clawson, in charge of a major rebuilding project for Wake. He turned around programs from where he's been before, but today one of the biggest challenges he has ever faced. As we send you down to Catherine Tappan. Coach, you always talk about one of the keys to success for this program. In your words, is avoiding the noise. The team is fourth in the college football playoff victory. You just honored your seniors on senior day, and you're playing the final home game of the season. What was the biggest message you conveyed to your team? You can't complete the mission with um, emotion. You got to do it with attention to detail. You got to do it with great enthusiasm uh, and, and focus. So it's really been about that. Save the emotion for after the game. Uh, but in this game, you can't have any emotion. You've got to have a focus and an attention to detail. Six of your notable starters are out with season ending injuries. You will be without leading rusher CJ Procise in this game with a concussion symptom. Despite all the adversity, you guys are still in the thick of the conversation for the playoff. What would you attribute to that success? Good recruiting. <laughs> you know, we've got good players, and, um, you know, it's now their turn to step up and, and uh, you know, play for us. We need them. I mean, there's some young players out there, but they're talented players, and, and they'll come through for us. Coach, thank you very much. Yep. Dan? Thank you, Catherine. You heard Coach Kelly, Doug Flutie, talk about emotion. It is swirling around there today, not only because it is senior day, but that the Fighting Irish have also fought their way into that number four position in the college football rankings. And really amazing with all the injuries that Catherine talked about, maybe just just as remarkable is the ascending that we've seen from Deshaun Kaiser, a quarterback. It's amazing. I mean, last year at the end of spring, he was the third string quarterback. Now he's one of the premier college quarterbacks 
out there. He's throwing the ball efficiently. He stands in the pocket. He's a leader. He's handled being the starting quarterback for Notre Dame with all the off-the-field demands, which is amazing, his poise and his maturity, and he continues the lead. So that position now pretty settled for Notre Dame. Really not the case when you look at Wake Forest, a 2 quarterback system all year long. Both guys will play. John Walford is the starter. He started all the games last year. He got beat up. Not a great offensive line. It slightly improved this year. He still takes a lot of hits. He's a very good passer, efficient in the pass game as far as reading, knowing the offense. But with a team like Notre Dame that's going to put pressure on him, we may see more of Kendall Hinton. Kendall's more of an athletic kid that can run around and make some plays on his own. He does throw the ball well. He's got a strong arm and can spin it. He just doesn't know the offense as well. And everybody from Wake Forest knows that they have to play pretty much a perfect game and hope for some help and some mistakes by Notre Dame to have a chance in this one today. Notre Dame wins the toss. And so they will have the ball first on an absolute beautiful senior day. It feels like more of a October day with temperatures in the 50s, brilliant sunshine. And again, that emotion of the senior day, trying to stay focused, and they've been busy, Doug, getting tickets for everybody, making sure the parents are taken care of and family and friends. I guarantee you the players are happy now that the parents are off the field and they can lock in the football. And as the guys said earlier in the pregame show, after the game is the time to get emotional about that and reflect. Right now it's time to play football. Notre Dame coming off that 42-30 win over Pitt last week. It wasn't as close as the score indicated as Pitt scored a couple of late touchdowns, but Notre Dame running its record to 8-1. Boston College next week and then in Palo Alto, Stanford looms as the final opponents in which Brian Kelly hopes turns out to be another chance at a national championship. So they're cranked up here at Notre Dame Stadium for the final home game of 2015. It'll be Mike Weaver to kick off for the Demon Deacons and C.J. Sanders standing just ahead of his own goal line. Just the third meeting ever between Wake Forest and Notre Dame. The Irish winning the previous two. The last a 38 to nothing win championship game where they hope to be a part of the festivities again. So here's C.J. Sanders taking a deep kick by Weaver and downing it where Notre Dame will come out with Deshaun Kaiser. As we take a look at the Notre Dame offense directed by Kaiser, starting lineups brought to you by Direct TV. His favorite target, Will Fuller. Freshman Josh Adams in for C.J. Procise of running back out with concussion-like symptoms and up front at center and the lone captain on offense for the Irish, Nick Martin, who is the final one to be introduced in the 27 seniors on this senior day. His final game at Notre Dame Stadium as the Irish begin at the 25. And look at the numbers for Kaiser this year. A lot of them built up in connections to Will Fuller. They have been a potent duo here in the beginning of games in the last several weeks. And Kaiser goes right to the air again, locks it up for Chris Brown, but Brown never had a chance. Pressure right away, getting up through the middle. This is a young team, Wake Forest, a young defense, but the, the strength of their defense is their speed at linebacker. They're very active linebackers all over the field. But again, on the first play of the game, Kaiser very calmly audibleizing. He is in control of this offense. Part of six, all six touchdowns last week in the win over Pitt. Kelly described it as the most complete game that Kaiser has had this season. And here's the first carry for Josh Adams, the freshman who picks up the first down. So Josh Adams, who was given the game ball last week in the win over Pittsburgh, when he was one yard shy of the Notre Dame freshman record in a single game, had 147 yards on 20 carries last week. That first one good for 11. They're not going to miss a beat as far as carrying the football with Josh Adams in the game. The area of concern may be pass protection. This kid can run the football. Again, C.J. Procise, who's just 25 yards away from a 1,000-yard season, not playing today, and so it'll give us another chance to watch Josh Adams this time bottled up at the line of scrimmage. What'll bring up second down and 10. Another look at our DirecTV starting lineups. 
as we take a look at the Wake Forest defense. Up front, Duke Ejiofor, best pass rusher for them. Chris Stewart is in for Josh Banks, who is suspended for the rest of the season after he violated a team rule. And there's the senior captain, Brandon Chubb, the leading tackler at linebacker. And Wake thinks that corner Brad Watson can stay with Will Fuller. We expect to see them in some third down situations. Here's the first pass complete to Adams, and he maybe gets a yard. And that'll bring up third and long. Markel Lee on the stop for the Demon Deacons. It's a nice job of containing Adams in the open field. Just a little swing pass, dumping it out there. Here is C.J. Procise, who went through the protocol after the concussion and an awkward kind of fall to the ground in the first quarter of last week's game. We've got all sorts of injuries that we've documented all year long. Tarion Bolston out, C.J. Procise out for this game, but then Chance to see a couple of freshmen, not only Josh Adams, but Dexter Williams as well. Kaiser buying some more time. And then being rushed out of bounds for maybe a yard. So that'll bring a fourth down of the punting unit for the Irish. Josh Oconye finally corralled Kaiser. Well, Will Fuller's out. He's not one-on-one. -on -one. That's a rolled-up corner. It's zone coverage. It was only a three-man rush. And defensive coordinator Mike Elko said, we're going to do a lot of drop coverage where we only rush three guys and drop off on third and long and make Kaiser hold on to the football. So a good early sign for Wake's defense. As we mentioned, Notre Dame has gotten off to some quick starts in recent games. Tyler Newsom's first punt is a beauty floating toward Tabari Pines, driving him back inside the five, and he goes down at the six. So Tyler Newsom bounced back after a subpar performance against Temple last week against Pitt. Picks up where he left off with a beauty. No score early South Bend. Notre Dame football on NBC is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. By State Farm, find your agent at statefarm.com. And by Coca-Cola, open happiness. Some of the past photos from earlier days among the Notre Dame seniors. Here's Chris Brown blowing some bubbles. And Joe Schmidt plays his final game at Notre Dame Stadium. And it looks like he's getting the fight on. Yeah, a little fight on. He's a West Coast kid. Yeah, and Beck was telling us yesterday that a lot of the members of his family are USC grads. So that's just another piece of the incredible story of how Joe Schmidt ended up here at Notre Dame. And such a huge part of that Notre Dame defense since he earned the scholarship after walking on. And now Wake Forest in a big hole here from its own six. Starts off with a handoff to Tyler Bell, who gets a couple more direct TV starting lineups for you. As we take a look at Wake on offense, you'll see two quarterbacks. John Wolford starts it off. Cortez Lewis and Tabari Hines each had long touchdown catches in the last game in the loss to Louisville up front. They've got right guard Dylan Intamin is the only senior starter on the offense. Fewest seniors in the country on a team. Just six by Wake Forest on second down and eight. They give it to Bell, who finds an opening and picks up the first down. Gain of 10 for Bell, a true freshman from Mobile, Alabama, and you will hear the words true freshman a lot with Wake. Keep an eye on number 70 on Joe Schmidt. Number 70, Anderson takes Schmidt, puts him on his back. That's what Wake would love to do. They would love to be able to run the football, eat up some clock, run the clock, and shorten the game. show up in the backfield at times. So you'll have two quarterbacks in there that can produce some trickery, or in that case, just give it to Hinton, who's got some great running skills. He's a phenomenal athlete, Hinton. He can run with the football. He, like I said earlier, he can sling it. He's got a great arm. He just isn't adept at the pass game yet, so they're going to find ways to use him. Hinton leads the team in carries and rushing. Has 316 yards coming into this game. Picks up six there, which puts Wake Forest in even better position. Second down and four. And a drive it again at the run six. Wolford gives it to Bell again. And they're moving that defensive front of Notre Dame. Well, the right side, Intamin is the senior leader of the offensive line on the right side at right guard. But overall, it's a young offensive line. Anderson there, number 70, at right tackle. He's taken over right tackle this week, only his second start of the season. And two freshmen at the tackle positions. 
very young and inexperienced, one senior leader. Cortez Lewis, another big game, and they're in Notre Dame territory after he picks up 23. First of all, Wolfer was under pressure from Joe Schmidt and gets hit on this throw. Outside release, little bumping and pushing, let that go. Good job playing the ball there. Lewis is long and lanky. He can make plays up over. Here comes Joe Schmidt, unblocked, and nice little pop on the quarterback, and Wolford stands in there. Here is Wolford from the gun. Tough guy, ran for his life all last year. He started the entire season for Wake Forest as a true freshman. Was sacked 45 times, but hung in there to finish the season. This time, it's going to be complete. Yes, they're calling it a catch to K.J. Brent for another big game of nine. Really nice job of placement on this ball. Wide side throw, he throws it low and away. Receiver coming back and makes the catch just in bounds, but a good catch. And initially, I didn't think the receiver was open on the play, and the ball threw him open to an open area. Wolford threw three interceptions in the second half alone last week. Actually, that a bye week, so a couple weeks ago in the loss to Louisville. It was amazing that they, they turned the ball over five times in the second half and still had a chance. And here's Wolford just coming out, slinging it. And another first down for Wake Forest as they are marching down the field. More direct TV starting lineups. As we take a look at the Notre Dame defense, up front, Captain Sheldon Day playing the best football of his career in the final Notre Dame game at home. Jalen Smith continues to lead the team in tackles, and Kibari Russell has really elevated his play down this crucial, crucial stretch at the corner. Kendall Hinton is now in at quarterback after Wolford just drove him all the way up to the Notre Dame 35. And this guy can run speed and Notre Dame is going to stop it for maybe a yard loss as James on Wallu led the charge. But with hitting the quarterback you're going to see more zone read, more quarterback run type things, not so much the drop back game. Wolford did look good though early in this drive, straight drop back and he's back at the quarterback yeah, position. Musical chairs at quarterback. Clausen going right now is Wolford who is three for three for 37 yards on this drive. taking the play clock down to very low numbers. They did it all last season. And he gets big time pressure there. He's just able to unload it in the vicinity of Tyler Bell. And that was Joe Schmidt coming in on Wolford. Joe Schmidt coming through. They brought two from the strong side. Two-man blitz, but Schmidt is the inside guy. Untouched and gets the hit on Wolford. He's come free three times already. This really speaks well for Wolford, though, as far as his knowledge of the game and getting rid of the football. Three times unblocked rushes have been in on and the ball's gotten out. So now it's third down and a big test here for Wolford and the Demon Deacons to kind of keep this drive alive. Tory Hunter, who debuted on defense last week against Pittsburgh, getting his first action in the secondary for Notre Dame as a flag comes in. Ball start, offense number 75, five-yard penalty, third down. And that's on the redshirt freshman, Justin Huron, at left tackle. He's probably their best pass blocker. He's on the blind side, on that left side, back side of a right-handed quarterback. And he's the guy they trust most in pass protection, but he's got Sheldon Day lining up across from him. Plus, I'm frustrated because now really out of field goal range at the moment with the ball back at the 41. And faced with third down and 16. Wolford stepping up, going to try to run it. Gets past the line of scrimmage, it'll still bring up. Fourth and long as he gets the ball to about the 32 yard line. It'll be a long field goal attempt as Joe Schmidt, very active, makes the tackle. Just because we say Kendall Hinton is a very athletic quarterback, that doesn't rule out the fact that Wolford can move his feet and run with the football. He's an athlete as well. And here we go on fourth down. They're going to give it a shot here with eight yards needed to get the first down. See what Brian Van Gordon, the 
defensive coordinator dials up for Notre Dame's defense. Showing some pressure, and here they come on Wolford. Stands in. Ball is batted out of the arms of the Demon Deacon receiver who had a chance at it, but it falls incomplete. And Notre Dame takes over. Tabari Hines reached up there like for a moment. He was going to be able to juggle that back into his arms. But Notre Dame takes over. But not after an impressive drive by Wake Forest, which stalls. For a better day. Wake Forest game, it's definitely for the seniors. And we're all going to lay it on the line like they do for us every other week. The senior class for the Fighting Irish this year is like no other. They really pulled me under their wing, and it's going to be really important for me to you know, play at my best and make sure that they can experience a great home victory and enjoy the, the, the Irish atmosphere one last time. And a great atmosphere it has been, especially here at Notre Dame Stadium. Joe Schmidt has had an active day already. Matthias Farley with that C on his chest. Huge honor for him, even though he's not a real regular starter. Notre Dame beginning his latest drive at its own 33, and Kaiser was on the muddy to Chris Brown, but no, it's not. Incomplete. Very sluggish start so far for Notre Dame. Wake Forest was able to move the ball, eat up a little bit of clock, get some first downs. Notre Dame was three and out in their first drive, and then a drop ball in the very first play. second leading receiver for the Irish outside of Will Fuller as Zach Dansel and Brad Watson were right there. Looks a little puzzled early here. Well, he had plenty of time to throw the ball, but there was no one open downfield, and it's, it's a great job in coverage. Will Fuller ran off the corner, and they tried to complete a ball underneath that. Again, it's a good job at changing up the looks on defense. They had a three-man rush on a third down play earlier. Now again, they're third down. You're going to get a lot of different looks. Yeah, what were the words of Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator? We're going to try to bring pressure, and then Notre Dame has watched him on tape and knows it does kind of turn into a carnival, but Kaiser able to hang in there this time, and Amir Carlisle picks up the first down for the Irish. Gain of 17 for Carlisle. It was Cameron Glenn on the coverage. Great blitz pickup by the offensive line, the entire line. Kaiser can just stand there flat-footed, hit the under route, and man-to-man -man coverage. Carlisle, former running back, very good once he has the ball in his hands. So a big pickup on third down and 10 for the Irish. Has them in Wake territory, and a fake to Adams, and Kaiser fooled everybody, and he gets close to another one before he's run out by Brad Watson. Even with his stature, Kaiser can be elusive. He's explosive as a runner. If he gets in the open field, he's gone. He has that kind of speed as well. He is a big, strong kid. And we know what he did against Temple with 143 rushing yards. One was the big game, but here's Adams again. And after the opening carry, hasn't been able to muster much. Josh Adams, the true freshman from Warrington, Pennsylvania, from Central Bucks South High School, just outside of Philadelphia. Right guard Steve Elmer gets thrown, <laughs> thrown on his back. That is Tyler Harris, number 36, just being physical and pushing the big boy out of the way and going to make the tackle. It's all about me. I got this. So on third and three, Kaiser out of the gun. And he just pops into the arms of Tory Hunter. Hunter looking for the first down marker. Good piece of running by Hunter, who for just a second there looked like he was going to be caught short and ends up turning it into nine. Duke Ejiofor brings him down. Tory Hunter did a lot of that on his own on the outside. He is a football player. That's how Brian Kelly described Tory Hunter. Put him over on defense a little, and within two days, he was in press coverage as good as any of the DBs on the field. He can do just about anything. He enjoys playing the game, and he is a football player. Irish keeping the drive alive. They give it back to Adams. He's got a little more room this time. Good game for Josh Adams of eight. 
Josh Adams kind of describes himself as a one-cut guy, a downhill runner, north and south. He's, he can be very physical, and his frame, when he walked into the meeting room we were talking with, I was amazed at how wide shoulder and big he is. He is going to be able to put on 20 to 30 pounds. He may even be a different back by next year. In the words of Brian Kelly, he goes, watch this kid. He's going to be a monster in a year or two. Second and short. Kaiser stringing it out. Complete first down. Good play as he connects with Hunter again. 13 yards on that connection. Torrey Hunter does a great job of sitting this down. There's really nothing on the outside. Will Fuller's on the outside trying to double move, and he just feels the soft spot, spins around and finds it, and gives his quarterback a target. So Kaiser has found Hunter and Carlisle and Adams. They haven't seen Will Fuller, who is split wide to the left at the bottom of the screen on first and 10. Give it to Adams, and he has got nowhere to go as Ejiofor and company swarmed him. There was penetration in the defensive line. i tell you what, Wake Forest's defensive front has come to play. They've penetrated a number of times. Defense, the strength of this team, and they've had some lean games in the last few years, but they lost Josh Banks, as we mentioned, their starting defensive tackle who started the last 21 games because of violating team rules. That was just announced on Thursday of this week. So an even younger defense, as Chris Stewart, a redshirt freshman, is in for him, but they're holding up decent in the early going. Kaiser just weaving his way and picking the holes to six. Well, Steve Elmer got thrown on a play a few plays back, but with this one he's pulling from right to left. Here's Steve Elmer, a right guard, pulling around. He's going to make the block, and this is nice patience by Kaiser. He could have gone north and south, cut it back to the right and into the end zone. That was a little bit too easy for Kaiser. 12 yards. Deshaun Kaiser opens the scoring with his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And now in position to hold for Justin Yoon to make it 7-0 Irish. So a little bit of a slow start for the Notre Dame offense, but they come alive here on that drive. 10 plays, 67 yards, capped off by Deshaun Kaiser, who had a huge game last week. And he runs it from 12 to start it out for the Irish. Watch Notre Dame football live on on your tablet or phone or connected TVs with NBC Sports Live Extra. Great atmosphere at Notre Dame Stadium today. Doug, you and I had a chance to get on the field, talk to a lot of the parents, and I think it's as big or bigger deal for them than it is for some of the players. I mean, just so many emotions. The last time they're going to see their son play here at Notre Dame Stadium, Chuck Wade downs it in the end zone, and Wake Forest will begin its latest series at the 25, trailing 7-0 after Deshaun Kaiser ran it in for the Irish. Thank you, Jimmy, and congratulations to Keenan Reynolds, part of a great Navy season. Notre Dame handing the midship and the only loss so far of the season. Wake Forest begins this series trailing 7-0, and Wolford begins it with another completion to K.J. Brent. Tell you what, he did a great job there going away from rotate. He sees coverage and does a great job of getting the football out and finding the open guy. Throw the ball to the open guy, right? Just, just That sounds simple. Yeah, just throw it to the guy. Sounds like open. the way Doug Flutie would <laughs> think it through. So second and six. Another completion by Wolford. Approaching the three minute mark of the first quarter. They keep it on the ground, and it is Tyler Bell who looks like he picked up another first down as we check in with Catherine. Well, Dan, Irish linebacker James Onwalu was being worked on on the sideline by the Notre Dame medical staff. His left knee is wrapped in ice. His teammates are coming over to give him hugs, and I've been told that he will not return to this game with a left knee injury, Dan. Man, another injury to Notre Dame. Of course, we'll wait and see after they check out on Wallow, but already, as we mentioned at the top of the show, six injuries, season-ending injuries sustained by Notre Dame starters so far. Wolford's pass is deflected out and picking it up out of the air is Andrew Trombetti. Sheldon Day deflected it, and Trombetti takes it in for the touchdown. side. 
Sean Betty gets the reward, but it was Sheldon Day with the pressure in the face of Walford. walford has been doing a great job getting the ball out quickly, but sometimes it just can't happen fast enough. Sheldon Day gets there. Yeah, Walford just lost the handle on it, but you're right. Day was the guy that got in there and caused the commotion. And Trombetti takes it in. And with 2.46 left in the first, Notre Dame has struck twice very quickly to take a 14 to nothing lead. Kaiser runs one in, and Andrew Trombetti, the sophomore from New Jersey, picks up the second Irish touchdown in a span of less than a minute. 55 seconds is all it's taken to go out in front 14 hit. It's Saturday Night Live with host Elizabeth Banks. Musical guest disclosure. There's an all-new Saturday Night Live later tonight on NBC. Final home game. Notre Dame Stadium for the season. Golden Dome shining brightly in this beautiful weather. As you look at Trombetti there, he just picked up the interception to give the Irish a 14-0 lead. Well, Brian Van Gorder has been dialing up the blitzes early, getting after Wake Forest's young offensive line. And the key to any blitz is trying to get somebody home free. Confusion. Joe Schmidt gets the hit on the quarterback. Again, Joe Schmidt coming free to the quarterback. Wolford was doing a good job of getting rid of the football. And he starts beating himself up and moving and misses this throw. And then the fight because you're speeding the quarterback up with pressures and hits. defense for Brian Van Gorder and we talked about it with him yesterday is that secondary he says the big handicap all year long are the big plays we've given up at certain times during the season says focus has been the biggest problem in that category so it's Wolford and the quarterback we've seen him expect to see him again quick strike complete to Chuck Wade for a short game. Again, that was just a quick read off his own read and a quick throw. The ball is going to be out even quicker than it was in the first two drives. So there's Kendall Hinton, number two, in. As Wolford takes a break. Hinton has played in all nine games. He started two when Wolford was recovering from an ankle injury. And he gives it to Tyler Bell. Kendall Hinton was even more highly recruited than Wolford. But he was the kind of guy that he just couldn't pass on. In, in, in the words of Clawson, he, go, I don't, he says, I'm not in love with this two-quarterback system, but neither guy has distinguished himself enough to be the full-time guy. Absolutely. He knows the, the qualities that go into a quarterback and being a leader, and you want one guy to be that guy. But with this offensive line, it's been inconsistent play offensively. Big third down and two for Hinton. Play clock under 10 as Hinton takes a brief look to the sidelines. And he fakes it to Bell and keeps it himself, and Hinton with a huge chunk. Goes deep into Notre Dame territory. So that's what those legs can do. Gain 23 when you need it. Does a great job of reading Trombetti, closing down, and takes off the ball. I thought on the, uh, the play before this that Hinton wanted to pull the ball, but it was too far into the belly. This time he gets it pulled and on the corner and shows his athleticism running the football. So Hinton takes a break, and back comes in Wolford. a couple, Elijah Shoemate, one of the seniors being honored before the game, right there, lost the three. Shoemate really reacts up quickly, and Wade, I believe, was afraid that Shoemate may break in front of that and came back to the ball. If he stayed out wide, he might have had a crease on the outside. He didn't really trust the block because Shoemate beat the block initially. Shoemate among those safeties for Brian Van Gorder, really the most consistent player all season. Second and 13 now for Wake. Once again, they take the play clock down to two. Wolford on the money, well short of the first. 
first down, brings a third and long to Cortez Lewis for a gain of seven, so they got some back. But that will bring us to the end of the opening quarter. A couple of quick strikes by Notre Dame in less than a minute. That made it 14 nothing Irish as we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football, NBC. Fourth head coaching stop for Dave Clawson in his second year awake. Bowling Green, Richmond, and Fordham. He turned around programs there. And when you have the smallest FBS enrollment, one of the smallest at just 4,800, and the smallest school in a Power 5 conference, Doug, that makes the challenge of getting players even tougher. But Clawson thinks he's got the right recipe to get it done. On third and six now his offense and they give it up the middle of Bell comes up short and that'll bring up fourth down and part of that recipe is recruiting and bringing the kids in not junior college transfers not fifth year graduate transfers build it from the ground up and that's why this team is so young here we go going for it again here they missed out on their first time going for it earlier in the first quarter pretty clean to me. I mean, there was some bumping and hand Pass interference. Defense number 36. Penalty results in a first down. That is a huge penalty on Luke. There was some hand fighting. He's jamming him. He's going along. It looked like, from that angle, it looked like Lewis did the pushing off, but it probably a grab with the right hand. There it is. That, and that is easy for an official from behind to see. Even though he released right away and it was a minimal grab, you see that jersey pulled, they're going to throw the flag. So the penalty keeps Wake's drive alive in the opening seconds of the second quarter, trailing 14 to nothing against fourth rank Notre Dame. Wilford running for his life again, pressured by Day. And now being chased down the field. That was the scene. What did they get sacked? They had 48 sacks they gave up last year. Wolford absorbed 45 of them, and he was on the run here. Sheldon Day gets pressure again up through the middle. Coming at it. He drifts out to the right. That's showing your athleticism. But I say throw the ball away here and avoid the hit rather than taking a hit for zero game. Oops, second down and 10 now for Wolford. Remains in there. Been spelled a few times by Kendall Hinton. front gets inside the 10. Gain of 15. And that'll bring up first and goal for Wake Forest. Greer Martini gets a clean run from the left side. Actually, that's going down. Coming on the outside. There he is. Had a clean run at Wolford. He avoided the hit and up through the middle. So Wolford showing that he can run it a little bit. Not just Hinton, who's the leading rusher and leading ball carrier for the Demon Deacons. Wolford comes up with a big first down pickup. He runs it again, but just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Max Redfield chasing along with Jerry Tillery. Wolford was one of the most prolific quarterbacks in Florida State history. In fact, he broke a number of Tim Tebow's Florida State passing records. He takes a spell, and it's Kendall Hinton who is in on second and goal. They tackle Hinton, but he doesn't get anywhere. In fact, chased back for a few yards. Loss of five. Sheldon Day. And somebody tried to block Sheldon. Now Sheldon Day right in here inside. Comes through clean and makes it happen way too fast for the quarterback. There's no read. I got to give that ball to the fullback and let him run. It's just Sheldon is penetrating all day. Big day for Sheldon Day. Big 
season for him and a huge day for Carol Boyd, his biggest fan. He had a chance to talk with her yesterday, and boy, is she entertaining. Warford is back in on third and goal for Wake. And as they've been backed up all the way to the 14-yard line, Warford on the run again. Can he escape this time? Dumps it over the middle, and it's complete down to the one-yard line to Tyler Bell. Fourth and goal, but huge pickup on a scramble by Wolford before he finally finds the true freshman. Initially, the protection is good, but eventually, without anyone open, it's going to break down, and he becomes an athlete. Wolford hanging in there best he can, moves, steps up, and make, just making a play. Just making his play. And so on fourth and goal, as you see Jalen Smith finally catching up there. But he's inside the one. Hitting back at a quarterback. And he did not get in. Jalen Smith appeared to stop up the hole there. Just crashed down from the outside. Runs the play down from behind. You're going to have an unblocked guy at the end of the line. And just speed gets Jalen Smith there around the corner. Makes the play in the backfield. Gave the ball to Bell, as Hinton and Bell have really been waiting the last second to see who gets it. But in the end, Notre Dame stops Wake and remains 14 to nothing leaders. Notre Dame football on NBC is brought to you by the Lincoln Motor Company and the entirely new Lincoln MKX. By Bose, music deserves Bose. By the Discover It Car, the car that treats you like you treat you. And by Lowe's, Black Friday savings starts now. Some pictures of the past of Notre Dame seniors through the years have had some great moments, including a run to the national championship game a few years ago. CJ Proceis, part of the honorees before the game. A senior from Petersburg, Virginia, sitting this one out. As Notre Dame moves the pile here back deep in their own territory after taking over on downs inside their own one. A lot of times you're doing the quarterback sneak out of your own end zone, and everyone knows because of the splits of the offensive linemen, they get real close and all that. That time Kaiser lined up in shotgun and then ran up last second to try to disguise it. Push it off your goal line, good strong push, give yourself a little bit of space. Well, that was a big opportunity, Doug, for Wake Forest to punch that one in and get within seven. And they have to be happy with what they've done offensively. They can't get any points for them. Kaiser in zone, and Josh Adams giving him a lot more room in the inside. Adams streaking up the sideline. All the way for the score. 98. That, folks, will give you a little glimpse of the future, but how about the present for Josh Adams filling in for C.J. Proceis. The longest run in Notre Dame Stadium history now belongs to freshman Josh Adams. So a close game early has turned into a 21 to nothing lead for Notre Dame. Josh Adams takes it to the house.
It's the third 100-yard game of the season for Josh Adams, and he picks up 98 of his latest 100-yard-plus total. He's got 116 yards for the game. Again, the longest run in Notre Dame Stadium history. Tyler Newsom puts it back into play for Wake, who is a little shell-shocked right now. Chuck Wade bringing it back across the 20, driving it up close to the 25-yard line where Wake Forest and Wolford will begin again. Back to the touchdown and the 98-yard run by the freshman. Doug. Notre Dame runs it into the short side of the field. And watch McGlinchey work with Elmer. Here's McGlinchey attack. He secures this block for Elmer. Then he turns out and makes the block on the defensive back. Watson and off and running. Great stiff arm. Wide receivers blocking downfield, which make it the 98-yard run instead of the just the 50 or 60-yard run. Talking with Coach Kelly, he says he's just kind of a one-cut kid, then just turns it upfield. A lot more muscle memory with a guy like Josh Adams than there is than a guy like C.J. Procise, who's learned to play running back this season. It becomes very instinctive for him. He knows when he can run through an arm tackle, or in that instance, maybe a stiff arm. Those situations are very natural to him. He's done it all his life. Where C.J. Procise is very strong, but he tries to make people miss and then uses his strength after contact. He understands the type of tackles that are coming at him and that he can go ahead and run through that arm tackle. And again, when this season began, Adams was so far back on the depth chart with Folston and then Procise, and then now he's the featured guy today late in the season. As Wake gets close to a first down on second and five. Looks like Tyler Bell. Nope, they're going to spot him short of it. It'll bring up third and short. He had the knee injury back in high school. Came back, had a phenomenal senior year, committed to Notre Dame, and got, you know, there were some question marks coming out of high school for him. Third and short for Wake. And Wolford is going to try to get it. Looks like he did have some momentum to pick it up. Close to the 35. Wolford, Wolford. Again, from a Wake Forest standpoint, they've got to be happy at how they've moved the football up and down the field. They were one yard away from making it a 14-7 game, and Notre Dame turns it around on them and it's 21-0. Clausen says he, you know, he has a, a highlighter or two that he kind of highlights, you know, key players and big-time stars for opposing teams. He said when he was looking at the Notre Dame sheet, he said it looked like a rainbow. There were so many notable stars. And again, he's got all these young players, 31 freshmen and sophomores on the two deep. First and ten, they pick up another one. This is Tyler Bell. Again, the youngest team in the FBS. And he says, we're just going to roll out all these freshmen and sophomores against NFL draft picks for next season. Phil Haynes does a great job of turning his guy out. That's Trombetti, who had the touchdown earlier for Notre Dame. Turns him out, creates the scene. Tyler Bell, true freshman, has 48 yards. He's been the guy that Wolford and company have gone to most of the game. We say company because Kendall Hinton has seen plenty of action as well, as expected. That quarterback for Wake Forest. Now, first and 10, the pocket just erodes on Wolford, and now the ball is loose. And they pick it up. It appeared that Notre Dame wasn't too aware that the ball was loose. Bonner was the guy that came free and made the hit. So it's a loss of 13 as Wolf, look at this, Wall just closes down. It was definitely a fumble and loose, but evidently Wake Forest fell on it. So second and 23. Fortunate to still have the football. Now out of the shotgun. short passes in front of me I'm breaking on something so yeah, th those little three-step drop passes are going to get a little bit dangerous as this game goes along now and look for the double moves which means slant go, a little hitch and go and try to go over the top a live ball looked like a lot of guys were going to wait for somebody else to recover it there for a few seconds if you don't hear the whistle keep playing Jalen Smith on the stop. Gain of nine, but they were in a huge third down hole, so 
That will bring out the first punt of the day for Alex Kennel, who after this punt will need just two punts to break the NCAA record for punts in a career. C.J. Sanders stands back deep to receive it from the former Australian rules football player who is considered one of the best punters in the country. He's so good at the touchbacks. In fact, that is just the third time in 59 punts this season that it's resulted in a touchback. Usually he's a little better than that to pin it back the opponent. Dan Hicks, Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappen back. 6-10 left in the opening half with Notre Dame leading Wake Forest 21 to nothing and beginning go. this drive at their own 20 to Sean Kaiser. And that is the very first catch for Will Fuller. So he doesn't grab his first one here until six minutes left in the opening half, but three more touchdowns last week for Fuller, who's having an amazing season as we go down to Catherine. All right, Dan, thank you. I'm here with men's head basketball coach Mike Bray. And last night, you guys opened up the season with a win against St. Francis on a night where prior to the game, you raised the ACC championship banner. How special was that for you and your team? Extremely special, Catherine. That's a very powerful moment in the history of our program. I think our guys are really proud of it. But we were ready to turn the page and let's chase another banner. Yeah, coming off a year where you guys set a modern day record, 32 victories, and you came one win within going to the Final Four for the first time in nearly four decades here at Notre Dame. How do you encore that performance? You know, we want to ride the momentum of last year. I lost two great seniors, but I've got three guys, really five guys back off that group that were part of a championship. So we feel we have good momentum into this season. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys on the court. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Thanks, Catherine. Dan? All right, Catherine, thank you very much. That was Tyler Harris knifing in there on the show. Kaiser with a sack and a loss of eight, which brings up third and 15. Tyler Harris is showing a physical presence for that defense. He's the one that threw Steve Elmer on his back early. And one of just six seniors, the senior six on the Wake Forest team. touchdown run just kind of waiting for the right moments and the right cuts picking up 16 there it's a three-man rush a lot of drop in coverage so you probably won't get a receiver open cleanly he just takes his time keeps his eyes up when it's time to run patient in the running picks up some blocks and finds the first i mean that wasn't a flashy run it was a smart run so kaiser's got 30 yards on the ground by himself Toss here to Josh Adams, and this time Wake is ready for him. That's Duke Edge of four, their best edge pass rusher who brings him down. Something else on the third down plays Notre Dame has been doing is going to four wide receivers and using a tight end for protection purposes. Josh Adams being a freshman, that's where he struggles a little bit is in pass protection blitz pickup. Fortunately for him, he could stay in the game because a lot of those long yardage, it's only a three man rush. So second and 13 for Kaiser. Again, right out to Adams, and once again, Wake is ready for a third and long. Josh Oconye, a part of the Wake defense there that stops Adams in his tracks. Again, Adams is coming out now, and Hans Show is going in a tight end for protection purposes. So they lose more ground there. They've got three wide to the right. There you see Hounschel there on the right side. Set up at the top of position. Backed him up 10 more yards. But we'll see what the call is. Personal foul. Number 78. Hands to the face. That penalty will be declined. Fourth down. Call on Ronnie Stanley. 
Clausen Deont is firing up his team, saying, nice job, we're going to take over here, get another chance. Deontay Austin at corner showed this real late and timed it perfectly coming off the edge. He's only a freshman, gets in there, great timing on this split. Arnie Stanley closing down the edge, but maybe if you can find a way to get a hand on that corner, get two. Here's Tyler Newsom, who had a big 54-yarder in his first month. This one not nearly as good. A low wobbler that is picked up by Hines. And Wake Forest is going to have good field position here with just a little more than two minutes left in the first half. So Newsom, 43-yard punt, six on the return. Wake on offense. Wednesday night is rivalry night with Capitals Red Wings. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern time on NBC as on Black Friday. Don't miss with hockey's best rivalries. 2015 Discover NHL Thanksgiving showdown as the Rangers take on the Bruins on NBC. But nothing could beat this shot from the middle of the ice. I used the puck there at the Compton Family Ice Arena to score the goal there, Doug. And we gave this young kid here a free airplane ride anywhere he wanted to go in the country. And where did he go? He wanted to go. Tapping Taking the slap shot, three opportunities that she had. We pushed the puck, and she took a real slap shot, and she was dead on. By the way, those are my only three attempts in ice history. It just might be the last, as Isaiah Robinson gets the call here with Wake trying to put something on the board here before the end of the first half. You were pretty impressive, too. You were right around the goal all three attempts. We didn't embarrass ourselves. I think as a group, we did extremely well. That, we were all right on the goal. That was the goal. Again, driving up close to first down yardage. Wake has all three of its timeouts here, so they can at least get a field goal out of this before going to the locker room. Doug, they've had some opportunities, and really, they're down 21 zip, but they haven't looked bad. They've really moved the football well, and they got stopped on the fourth and goal at the one yard line. It could have been a 14 7 game instead. Of They have to finish these drives off and come up with points if they want to stay in this game. And he got a nice little push from his tailback there, Robinson, because his momentum had stopped to come backwards. Robinson got a little bit of a bush push. So they get the first down. The ball spotted at the Irish 35. Coming near side, that's complete. Another first down to K.J. Brent. Gain of 11, Cole Luke on the coverage. The 6 490 pounder from North Carolina. One of a few transfers for Wake Forest. He played at South Carolina for three seasons before transferring over. He's doing a nice job out on the wide side, too. And Wolford gets that throw out on time. That ball's in the air a long way. And they've done a nice job of completing those short passes to the wide side. Wolford getting the ball of the plays of quarterback. as well. A flag comes in again. Personal foul. Face mask number 55 defense. Half a distance to the goal. First down. Wow, another costly penalty. Cole Luke earlier, which gave Wake Forest an opportunity. This time, Bonner. Well, Bonner did come around the edge and get the initial pressure, and I guess he double backs, doubles back to stay into the play. There's the face. It was not Bonner. Yeah, that was Ogwara, number 45, who grabbed the face mask. Well, he gets him there maybe on the end, so maybe there was a double face mask there. Wolper feeling the pressure from Smith. And lucky that he didn't take the sack. Jalen Smith, one of the best linebackers in the country, if not the best. Just his athleticism and quickness gets him there. Brian Van Gorder decided to dial up an all-out blitz that time and just bring the house. Projected first rounder in the NFL, a junior. We'll see if he is around next season, but projected as a first rounder. And likely his last season, but we'll see. Time out on the field with Notre Dame up 21 to nothing. Less than a minute left in the opening half. 
Well, is this going to be a fun week at historic Fenway Park next week? Notre Dame looks to continue its run toward a potential spot in the college football playoff. It takes on the Boston College Eagles as the Shamrock Series continues. And there is how they turn that quaint Major League Baseball park, Doug, into a football facility. It's the Shamrock Series, the latest edition coming your way next week on NBCSN 7 Eastern Time as the stage the first football game at Fenway since 1968. Second and 10, Wake Forest here trying to keep something alive here as Tyler Bell dives close to the 10. Boy, Greer Martini closed down hard from the backside. There was a bad snap, which took the read part out of it for Wolfer, too. He just decides, I'm going to hand it. Here he comes off the edge. Greer Martini using his speed to try to close it down on the backside. Great tackle. But the, the bad snap doesn't allow Wolford to read the zone read and be able to have that option to pull it. Once you get into that, it becomes panic mode. Make sure the handoff and let the back take it. So third and nine, as remind you that coming up, it's the Discover Card Halftime Report. Jimmy Roberts in our studio. He's got the scores, highlights from around college football. Another big afternoon and big night. Plus, Liam Hines, Jonathan down on the field. They'll break down the first half of this one on Senior Day. And we'll also have a special report from Lester Hull in the NBC News studio with the latest developments from the tragedy in Paris. All that coming up on the Discover Card Halftime Report. So Wake still with two timeouts left, 48 seconds before the first half ends, truly 21 to nothing. Four touchdown underdogs, the Demon Deacons came in. of seven. McGuire coming. He's going to loop in. And watch the athleticism jumping up and over to get to Wolford. That's one of those balls where Wolford thought he wasn't protected initially and starts to step up early. What an athletic play. Leaping over Bell. After the play, personal foul. Number 15 on the offense. 15-yard penalty. So that backs him up even further as the penalty is on Cortez Lewis. Came in the corner of the end zone out there, and there he is just grabbing the face mask. That's an easy call. Of Cole Luke. When the helmet comes off and the face mask is still in your hand, I think you're going to get called. So that penalty backs it all the way up to the 33-yard line. And a nice job by Cole Luke turning the other way and pulling away from it after the fact. Be about a 50-yard field goal where they stand right now on fourth and 31 with 31 seconds left. So it turns basically a 35-yard field goal into a 50-yard field goal, that penalty. And initially it was first and 10 from the 13 going in. They had stopped. The game the clock will start on the ready for play. And now they're all the way back to the 33. It was first and 10 from the 13-yard line. And on that missed block, you teach your tailbacks to stay high, keep your feet under you, and not to cut. And that's why he was jumped. <laughs> they're just, they're just stalling it out. I'm going to take one running. more shot here. Now you're safe to kick the long field goal or throw a Hail Mary into the end zone yep. without Notre Dame getting the ball back. Well, Doug, you know, you, you have the, the great performance that Notre Dame had in the last five games, getting through the meat of their schedule, getting through some really tough teams, and now you've got Wake Forest here, you got Boston College next week, which both teams really struggling here. What do you think of Notre Dame's performance so far? I know they're up 21 to nothing, but with everything that's at stake down the rest of the year. They're taking care of business. Their defensive line and linebackers are dominating this game right now, and offensively, Josh Adams running the football has been very effective and experienced. 
explosive. Wake Forest has found ways to move the football, but has nothing to show for it. All right, and again, what's at stake, of course, is to continue that chance to play for a national championship. The first two college football playoff pulls out. Notre Dame fifth in the first one and moving up to fourth in the latest as Brian Kelly comes out and takes his timeout. Very decisive timeout, yes. too. At that. Kelly is the king of the late first half timeouts, isn't he? And he has a tendency to use every one of them. I always like leaving one on the clock there, have a timeout in your pocket, and make the kicker think, is he or isn't he going to call the timeout when he starts to kick the ball? Kelly, in these situations, has used every timeout. There's Cortez Lewis getting a talking to after picking up the penalty, which back Wake Forest up. Uh, it's points off the board because of a selfish play. So Mike Weaver, his career long, is 50 yards. 24-year-old is the second oldest player on the team. Behind Alex Kennel, who we talked to you about earlier, the punter. So the special teams unit, the senior cast of Wake Forest. So here is Morgan from officially, Weaver from officially 51. That one sailing right and no good. And then last second ticked off the clock. So that is the way the first half is going to end. Mike Weaver unable to connect from 51 yards out. And Dave Lawson and Wake Forest scoreless in the opening half. Let's send you down to Catherine. Coach, coming into this game, you knew you had a void to fill in the absence of C.J. Procise, but is that the first half you expected from Josh Adams? Well, it was obviously a great individual run, and, uh, you know, he's got, you know, great speed, and, uh, you know, he's just a, a tough kid, and uh, we needed a big run. He, he got us out of tough territory. Besides winning the game, what is your objective in the second half with this team? Well, we got to possess the football, and we got to get off the field on third down. Um, and stay out of third down on offense. We, we have not been very productive on first and second down. Give credit to Wake Forest. They're doing a very good job on first and second down. And then, you know, obviously they're, they're holding on to the football and we haven't had many possessions. Coach, thank you very much. Dan? All right, Catherine, dodge the flying marshmallows. It looks like a blizzard out there in early November. That is a senior day tradition as Notre Dame has a 21-0 lead. Discover Card Halftime Report coming your way next as we send you to Jimmy Roberts in our NBC studio. It's just been a blessing for me to be able to play here at Notre Dame. You know, not many people get this opportunity and it's something I'm very grateful for. I've been here for four years and just to run out to my mom's arms, it's, it's going to be a special moment. That's her day too. It's all over with. I'm going to leave. It's so proud and just so happy and actually I'll probably leave sad too because I don't ever want this to end. I love playing for Notre Dame. a great scene before kickoff today, the 27 seniors, and including that man right there, Josh Anderson, who was awarded a scholarship after persevering as a walk-on here at Notre Dame before the season began, and those parents that drove all these guys to their Pee Wee football games, there's Jared Grace's parents, he's gone through so much with the injuries, and his good friend Joe Schmidt beating his parents, Joe and Deborah. Sheldon Day and his mom, Carol Boyd. Look at that, Doug. You can't beat that. That's, that's so Carol right there. I mean, we've heard her all year long. She's so animated. Loves her little baby. Yep, we had a chance to talk to her on the sidelines. She said, I'm going to miss this family. She wants to adopt another Notre Dame football <laughs> player so she can continue to hang out on the field. There is a look at the first half stats and look at the time of possession for Wake Forest. They had the ball all those minutes to Notre Dame, so... There was those two big plays by the Irish, the turnover, that resulted in the Andrew Trembetti big interception return for the touchdown, and then Josh Adams going 98 yards. Outside of those, Wake Forest has done a pretty good job. I'll tell you what, total yards are just four shy at Notre Dame. They've run six more, they have six more first downs, 17 more plays. They've done everything that they wanted to do in the first half, and you couldn't come up with any points about it. So Tyler Newsom puts it in play. This is Chuck Wade with a chance to bring it out for Wake. He comes back to the left and gets it across the 20 to about the 22-23 yard line. Let's send you down to Catherine. Dan, I spoke to Wake Forest head coach Dave Clawson coming out at halftime, and he said he really didn't think his team played that poorly in the first half. The difference was the two big plays, not scoring on fourth and one and the 98-yard touchdown run by Josh Adams. He said without that play, Notre Dame only has 76 yards of offense.
defense. And he said the keys to the second half are continuing to contain Will Fuller and score when they have the opportunity, Dan. And stay away from the turnovers. What got to them big time. As Wolford's pass was intercepted by Trevetti and brought back into the end zone for an Irish touchdown. And then again, the second half on the ground with Tyler Bell, who's got the bulk of the carries for Wake Forest. Coming into this second half, now with 62 yards on the ground. Max Redfield brings him down. But again, a positive gain on first down, running the football, working the clock, starting running. That was the Wake Forest game plan coming in. Here is Deshaun Kaiser working things out before he gets his first opportunity of the second half. finish the game without allowing those late scores that make the score look a little messier. And this time of year, that's important. Yeah, with the playoff committee watching very closely, you know, the 42-30 win over Pitt wasn't as close as that score appeared, but again, a late touchdown. A couple of them by Pitt made it seem closer than it actually was. Third and three. Wolfer trying to pick it up, and he does. So it's a Wake Forest first down. That completed to Tabari Hines for a gain of nine. Very Russell on the coverage of Hines. Great patience in the pocket. Good pass protection this time. Wolford starts with his head out to the left. Doesn't like what he sees. Bounces back to the right side of the field. Sets his feet and delivers a strike. I like the way he read coverages and can go front side to back side. Ball at the 40. It's the first catch for Hines. This time on the ground. Able to get much more than a yard. Rochelle, who again got the start inside for the Notre Dame defense. Daniel Cage, not a part of the defense for Notre Dame today because he's nursing concussion-like symptoms. So Isaac Rochelle moved inside. That allowed Andrew Trombetti to get the start. And so a little more shuffling for Notre Dame on defense today with Cage out. And again, on Wallen, the starting linebacker has been out of the game and will not play for the rest of the game. Out with a Safeties for Notre Dame are starting to creep a little closer to the line of scrimmage, helping run support, also try to eliminate some of that quick passing game. Elijah Shoemate on that last play was, was up in there a little quicker than they were in the first half. So the safeties appear to be a lot lower and closer to the line of scrimmage in the second half. Third down and eight now for Wolford. He's got Isaiah Robinson to his right. And three split to the far side. Sheldon Day was creeping across. An Intamin flitched number 63 after Sheldon came across. Offside. What? Defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Sheldon Day got back on side, but because the right guard flinched with his movement, the call goes against the defense. So Day, who's having quite a senior day. If you could see Dylan Intimate just re lift up a little bit before the snap, it was because of Day's movement. So Day gets situated again here on third and three. He's just building up a steep momentum here. Here comes Day from the left side of Wolver. Passes incomplete. Deflected out of the arms of Tabari Hines, and that'll bring up fourth and three. Romeo Aquara came off the edge and makes a big hit on the quarterback. This ball, very fortunate to find the ground. Greer Martini in coverage, nice tight coverage. Ball gets tipped in the air, and as a quarterback, here comes Aquara with the hit on the quarterback and, and make it come out quickly. So out comes Alex Kennel. Earlier in the first half, we remarked that he was three punts away from setting the NCAA record, so 
with that lone punt, he now is going to be just one punt away from establishing a new NCAA record for punts. So he's now got 321 career punts. Somewhat of a dubious record, but Kittle's been excellent throughout his career for Wayne. Notre Dame football at NBC is being brought to you by IB by Cadillac. By FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. And by U.S. Bank. Look at last night's pep rally and Josh Anderson with a chance to address the students and fans of Notre Dame. We talked about it. Uh, he was awarded a scholarship before the season began after being a walk-on and one of those guys that's played the scout team and persevered and he's going to get his chance maybe in this game on senior day to play later on. We'll have to see how it all unfolds with Notre Dame up 21 to nothing. Talk about running north and south. He decides this. He starts to stretch it. And when he decides to put that foot in the ground, it's north and south up the field. No dancing and moving. Run through the arm tackles if possible. So he does pick up the first down. Let's go. They give it to him again, but Anderson not able to get anywhere with it. You mentioned earlier about how he was injured after his junior season in high school, Doug. And it's a lot of times where, you know, even elite athletes and highly recruited athletes, a lot of the teams back off when you get injured. And we were talking with Josh yesterday. He said, yeah, there were a few schools that backed off, and he was heavily recruited. But Notre Dame was right there the whole time. Brian Kelly telling us, even after that season-ending knee injury, you know, we knew the surgery went OK, but he had all the characteristics of a guy, the kind of guy, an athlete, student athlete, that we want at Notre Dame. He just said he had a good feeling about him, the way he respected his family, the way he conducted himself, and it looks like it's turned out pretty well. Yeah, character was a big part of that decision and offering Josh, and he came to campus with his mom, and his mom had a thousand questions, and he just sat there quietly and let Coach answer them all, stayed up. Coach understood that Brian Kelly said, you know, you could see the maturity in the kid right away, and that was very important to him. So now third and 11 from the 22. Great job of reversing his, the ball was thrown over the opposite shoulder that Torrey Hunter initially was looking and he had to flip his head and almost found the ball. Like we said about Torrey Hunter earlier, he's just a football player and that's what Brian Kelly describes him as. He can do a little bit of everything. So a good sign for Wake and his defense there. Notre Dame having to punt this one away and it's not a good punt again by Newsom. And it's corralled there by Hines a fairly sure return is still going to give Wake Forest excellent field position at about the 45 yard line. Demon Deacons need to make something happen, truly 21 7. Time now for the Mercedes Benz top performances on this date 1992, truly Penn State 16 9 with 25 seconds to go. Rick Meyer throws a touchdown pass to Jerome Bettis to pull the Irish within one. Head coach Lou Holtz goes for the win. 16 victory, and that's your Mercedes-Benz top performances. So snowy day there back in 1992, but an absolute perfect day on the campus of Notre Dame. Pink purple sky, sunset on the senior day. It got hit back in, or actually over it for Tyler Bell looking for him on this opening play of the series. That's a loss of two. QBs were in on the play. Him takes a walk off and so now leaves the stage to Wolford on second down and 12. 
Stay alert for some trick plays when both quarterbacks are on the field together. Continues to be active on that Notre Dame defensive front. And Brian Van Gorder dialing up some blitzes. That time he brought Matthias Farley off the edge. He's mixing up. He's giving this quarterback a lot to look at and a lot to process. And I really feel Wolford's done a nice job overall. The one big turnover turned into seven the other way. been on a sack run the last few games for Notre Dame. That's the latest one for a loss of five. It was only a four-man rush. Here's Cole Luke in coverage on one side of the field. Looking strong side. Kabari Russell. Everything was shut down. Forced the quarterback to hold on the ball. It was the one time where protection actually wasn't bad initially. He just had to hold on to the ball. And this is the punt that will give Alex Kennel the NCAA record. 323rd to pass Nick Harris of Cal, who had the record for some 15 years. And Kittle is your new NCAA record holder in total punts. A flag is down to throw it back at the 44. So Sanders hauls it in at about the 15-yard line. We'll see what the call is. It's Alex Kittle. He's not your average punter, that's for sure. He's the team captain. Vocal, tough guy. Again, the oldest player on the team. Played Australian rules football before coming over here to the United States to play for Wake Forest. Personal foul for roughing the snapper on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards and results in a first down. Doesn't count. He, did, he doesn't hold the record anymore. Uh, it was old, you know, Nick Harris is, is probably celebrating somewhere <laughs> that he has not been passed. Well, it's right over the center. You have to allow, you are not allowed to light up the center on kicks with the long snapper, and he gets, I, there's contact. It wasn't actually uh, a lot of contact, but enough to make the call. And so the ball now at the Irish 44, first and 10. You know a lot of punters that are captains, Doug? I mean, I know there's a current, but the, the punter from Maryland is a captain. It takes a certain kind of guy to be a captain as a punter, doesn't it? Well, players tend to make fun of the punters and kickers because that's all they do. They do their one thing and they go sip coffee all day and wait for the next meeting. This kid's a, a football player, though. He's tough. He's a leader. He's done a lot of things well for this team. You're going to get your opportunities. Last year, Wake Forest was the worst offense in the country. They averaged less than 40 yards a game in rushing. The numbers have improved a little bit this season, but still, it has been an uphill battle for Wake Forest as Tyler Bell, though, is getting some pretty good yards today. And talking about Kanal, I mean, he did a great all last season. No touchbacks. It's not like he's just booming punts as far as he can kick them. He does a great job of changing, changing field position, and Kittle actually changed field position in the Boston College game, a 3-0 win for Wake Forest all day long. But that one for the all-time highlight reel, 3-0 against your uh, <laughs> the Eagles, huh? So second down and eight. in there just as the play clock is getting down to double zeros. Ball start. Offense number 63. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Come on, seniors aren't supposed to make mistakes like that, huh? We talked about him earlier as the only senior offensive starter for Wake Forest. He was the only guy that really was a significant player the last time Wake Forest played Notre Dame. And in fact, was the starter on the other side of the line. And now he's moved into the right guard position, but that team lost 38 to nothing a few years back. And of course
scores Notre Dame win the national championship game. Second down and 13. They get it over to Bell. Well short. And so that'll bring up third and long. And for four on end of it, we send it down to Catherine again. Well, Dan, he started 33 straight games for Wake Forest before sitting out with a concussion back on October 10th against Boston College. He said it was really difficult sitting out. And he asked the coaches, how do I sit out and help the team win? He used a different perspective of standing on the sideline to be a vocal leader for his teammates. He said he was able to see the ups and downs in offense and defense much better from that view. But, of course, he does prefer the line of scrimmage, Dan. So here's him the trying to protect Wolford on third and 11. Wolford gets it off and wide is Hines, who had the big catch a couple of weeks ago, a 58-yarder for a touchdown against Louisville, and Hines is good for 14 on just his second catch of the game. Hines is more of a kick return, punt return type of guy with great quickness. See him avoid the collision into the middle of the field. Wolford did a great job of stepping up and taking a shot. And delivering that ball. They go to Tyler Bell out in the flat. He picks up five or six on first down. So this does not really look like a team that would have the worst offense in the country last year and really not a lot better this season. They're having their moments when they're moving the ball against Notre Dame. They really are. They're getting the ball out quickly, short completions, running the ball efficiently on first down. They're doing an excellent job. They just can't score points. down looked like he was going to be stopped for maybe a loss running through an arm tackle getting up inside and, and fighting his way through being a physical runner he plays special teams as well he almost blocked the punt a little while ago if he had gone straight to the punter he would have had a punt block too he's a tough kid that's playing special teams and your starting tailback had his best game against North Carolina State with 58 yards, but Bell already has 72, so he's established a new career high as Wake Forest has got it down to the 20-yard line. And Wake Forest continuing this theme of dominating the time of possession. They got twice as many plays as Notre Dame. That ball flies incomplete, intended for Hines again. Second down and 10. Again, an all-out blitz by Brian Van Gorder in this defense. He's dialing everything up and getting after it to try to keep Wake Forest out of the end zone. Yeah, not any huge, you know, game-breaking touchdown plays that Van Gorder's defense has given him so far. That's what he's been trying to stay away from. But Wake Forest gets some big chunks on this drive. Sheldon Day pressure, breezes by Wolford, and he goes to the goal line, complete. Right at the one, it appears, to Tabari Hines. Nope, they got him in there. They're... Nope, it is just short of the goal line. What a great job of stepping up in the pocket with pressure. Day was coming off the edge. Sheldon Day on Serenay on the outside, turning the corner. Great job of stepping up through and delivering a strike in man-to-man -man coverage, and Hines lays out for the catch. But Wake Forest has been at the one-yard line before. And this will be a review. Isn't that tough to, tough to tell from that angle, but I think he landed before the goal line. But did he have control of the ball until after? See the bobble there? So now you have control, and you might be in the end zone. So if you land without control, but don't get control until you're in the end zone, I think that's a score. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yeah. I mean, that's a heck of an effort. He does not control it right away. Now he wraps it to the chest. Yeah, he completes the process once he gets across. After review, the running on the field stands. No. Nope. They're just calling it an outright catch, landing right there at the, at the goal line. Well, let's bring in the former uh, supervisor of officials of the ACC, Doug Rhodes, on that call. Doug, you, you agree with that? I do. You know, you, we talk, talk every week about the elements of a catch, possess the ball and control it get a body part down in bounds. And then the last part, uh, when going to the ground, 
survive contact with the ground. And, and this one, the official's in good position. He's right on the goal line. I think that last down the line view, this one we have right here, this is the one that shows body contact. The ball hasn't broken the front edge of the plane yet, so uh, they're going to have to stand with what's on the field. But as Doug said, it didn't appear he had control even at this point. Which is time. Still no signal as Wolford tried to sneak it in. But it would have to be indisputable. To the now, they're saying it's a touchdown for Wolford. So Coach Clawson and Wake on the board with 240 left in the third. Well, this is just wiggle your way through and find a crease. Bell gets behind him and gives a little push and a shove. And by, there's the leg still churning from Wolford under the pile. So by the time they get to the ball, it's in the end zone. Six for Wake Forest. And that caps off an 11-play, 55-yard drive with a sneak by Wolford. Mike Weaver on the negative 21-7 game with 2.40 remaining in the third. So Wake in that methodical kind of Patience takes it down the field, takes more time off the clock. And once again, that key catch there by Tabari Hines, which was ruled just short of the goal line. That's okay. Wolver takes it in to cut the Notre Dame lead to 14. Next Saturday, the fiercest rivalry in the Ivy is on NBCSN. It's the 132nd plane of the game as Yale hosts Harvard next Saturday at 30 Eastern time. CSN. So Wake Forest on the board, thanks to Wolford's less than a yard sneak into the end zone for the Demon Deacons. 2.40 left in the third. Notre Dame will get another shot here from its own 25-yard line. Well, there's Dave Clausen, who knows a little bit about uh, Division Three football. Played for Amherst. They beat Williams 17-7 in the biggest little game in America. Now you're up to date in college football. Well, you don't have to be a star player in your own right to uh, become a uh, very good college football coach. you got Dave Clawson, who was a defensive back, as we mentioned, for Williams College, and Brian Kelly for Division II. Assumption was a linebacker. Look at that shot from back in the day for both those guys, Clawson and Kelly. A couple of Division II and Division III schools in the state of Massachusetts. Clawson to keep his hopes alive of keeping alive. It would be a huge upset here, but it's 21-7 as Notre Dame tries to get back the momentum that Wake Forest has regain time of possession continues to just be crazy in favor of wake forest i think wake forest is very fortunate to get a 15-yard penalty on that punt that kept the drive alive and they took full advantage of it notre dame needs to answer with a real solid drive 20 now almost 30 minutes for wake forest as josh adam gets the call to just over 13 minutes I mean, for Notre Dame. You That's could over a 16 minute advantage for time of possession for Clawson. That's their goal every that, You couldn't draw it up any better for Clawson the way things have gone today for him, other than the two big plays of being stopped down by the goal line and a 98 yard run and the turnover for a touchdown. Clawson talked about last year that they were so non competitive that they again took that play clock down to zeros practically every possession just to try to themselves in the game somehow, some way. That is Chase Hounschel, who collects his first career reception. And here is a guy that's been through three surgeries on the same shoulder. Didn't even know if he's going to be around for this final year at Notre Dame after he switched over from the defensive end position to keep his career alive, and he finally gets a catch here. That was a huge third down conversion because Notre Dame needed to possess the football. Josh Adams bringing the big crowd up across the 45. It's about that time of the game where the Notre Dame offensive line decides they take control of the game, and they love those little scrums. They, they live for that moment to start pushing the pile and get a mindset of running the football. I wouldn't doubt that Notre Dame tries to establish a run throughout this drive. Second down and short, under a minute left in the third. Third 
and three. Zeke Rodney was in there on the chase. Pressure of Kaiser. Strictly a coverage sack, though. I mean, Kaiser did have time to slide and move, but had nothing upfield, creating another third down situation. Kaiser, Wake Forest defense is playing tough. I was going to say, Kaiser was uh, once the recruiting focus for Bowling Green when Dave Clawson was a coach there. Growing up in Toledo, it was just about a half hour from his high school. In fact, they gave Kaiser just a second offer. Toledo gave him his first offer before the whole recruiting doors were blown off and everybody began to know who Deshaun Kaiser was. And he goes down on third and three. Kaiser sacked by edge of four. And that is a guy that Wake Forest has welcomed back after he missed the first five games of the year with a preseason concussion. Just a great swim move. Watches up the field, up and under. And pressure right away on Kaiser. Didn't have an opportunity to look up the field. So that is a big stop for Wake Forest. And there's a little life on that far sideline. Kaiser talking things over with Kelly. And he's like, man. So the final seconds tick off of the third quarter. And Wake Forest, again, a four-touchdown underdog to the fourth-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame is within two scores of the Irish. The end of the third quarter, Notre Dame leads it 21-7 as we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your NBC local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Crescent moon over Notre Dame Stadium. Wake Forest within 14 as we begin the fourth quarter. And Notre Dame ready to give it back to Wake Forest here. This time, Newsom with a nice high hanging punt. Going for a fair catch at the 14 is Tabari Hines. Well, it's a big day in college football. Let's take a look at the latest college football playoff top 10 rankings. Clemson playing Syracuse today, Alabama, Valley, Mississippi State. Ohio State beat Illinois 21-3 today. And they've got this Notre Dame score 21-7. So much football to be played. There's Stanford with a huge game against Oregon tonight. The Irish, of course, play the Cardinal in Palo Alto in a couple of weeks to end their regular season. So lots to play for here and lots of style points. Yet the Notre Dame wants to put out there for the committee. And right now, 21-7 doesn't look great, Doug. But again, we've got a full quarter left. That's a hard hit by Kavari Russell on Camp Serenade. That is Wolford's favorite target, but Serenade with yet a catch today so far. Russell put a lick on it. Well, Russell's in charge of the flat. He's the flat defender. He comes off the receiver and delivers a blow as the ball rise. Maybe the first poor read by Wolford of the day. And Kendall Hinton has checked back into the game for Wake Forest on second down and 10. Third down and long. Very important for Notre Dame to get a three and out here. Give their defense some rest. They've been on the field a little bit today. The time of possession is, is swung to Wake Forest. And the offense needs to find a rhythm for Notre Dame. And Wolford is back in on third and long. Known as the more accurate passer than Hinton. But he's also shown some mobility today as well. Steps up, delivers, and it is complete to Serenay. Gets his first catch of the game, but that's going to bring up fourth down. This time, Brian Van Gorder changes up the look. Stems gets the backers up in there, makes it look like it's going to be a blitz. Everyone bails out. Keep everything in front of you with the three-man rush. Come up and make the hit and get off the field. And now, Kennel eyeing the record. Remember what happened on his last punt that would have been the record breaker. A penalty. Took it away. It was good news for Wake Forest, but now Kittle will have another chance here. For his 323rd career punt. No flags, and there's your record breaker. C.J. Sanders let it come down to the 31-yard line. A little confusion back there. Sanders backed off. So 
Kill is the man. Move aside, Nick Harris. There's a new punting king of college football. You can visit blueandgold.com on the Rivals Network for the most complete coverage of Notre Dame football and football recruiting on the web. Enjoy detailed scatter reports, recruiting updates, and site analysis, player features, and much more. And you can bet that Carol Boyd, the mother of Sheldon Day, is all over Blue and Gold. Com. She was giving us the scouting reports on Sheldon Day and the guys that have treated her baby not so well. There is a good way to start. Complete to Chris Brown. And there's a little bit of extra stuff going on there on the sure. sidelines. And the flag comes in on Brad Watson, who was over there on the coverage of Brown. Yeah, not a big late hit out of bounds, but definitely through the receiver, Chris Brown, late out of bounds after the whistle. Clawson is going crazy. There was no need to throw Chris Brown. He was out of bounds. The play was over. He just kind of spun him and threw him a little bit. There's no need for it. It wasn't a violent collision or anything where it was easy. Personal foul. Number 25 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. I don't know about that now. It was a, so, yeah, he ripped at the ball with the right hand here. That's OK. Now with the left hand, just yeah, a little was, pull on the jersey and pull him to the ground. There There's, wasn't that need for the last little tug. I, I, it's not a violent thing. It's not like unnecessary. It's a late hit. Got a feeling had he not done that, it wouldn't have been called. Yeah, if he hadn't have pulled at the end, the rip at the ball with the right hand, that was OK because he was just going out of bounds at the time. But I'm sure the whistle had blown. There was nothing flagrant, but it was late. Watson, the, uh, their best cover guy out there on Chris Brown, gave a big, big cushion on the play. Well, let's uh, get an update on this from Doug Rhodes again. Doug. Well, the rule says when a player's obviously out of bounds, you can't hit him or conduct these other acts. So, you know, it's not flagrant, like you say, Blaine, but the rule doesn't go to the severity. It's unnecessary. as it now appears that there's no flag on the play. It's still late. I think there should be a flag because it was late. Well, we move on. How about a little explanation there? <laughs> Just a little. So, back to first and 10 from the 46. Kaiser's going to try to look for another hole on the left side. Maybe gets one yard. Second down and nine. Edge of four. Moves over there to meet the Irish QB. Edge of four, the best pass rusher for Wake Forest, a guy that can penetrate, get in the backfield. It's just not as easy up front for Notre Dame as they would have thought coming into this game to move people out of the way. We brag about, we have bragged all year long on this offensive line, and they need to take control of the game. Dexter Williams is now behind Kaiser. He's the other true freshman running back. Again, C.J. Prosize out of the game. They fake it to Williams, and Kaiser's going down deep at the 30-yard line and complete to Will Fuller. Just the second catch of the game for the Irish superstar. Deontay Austin on the coverage. It's a big one for Fuller. Well, Austin in coverage over top, but Williams is getting underneath it, and the ball is put in a great spot. Another excellent throw by Kaiser to put it between defenders. Will Fuller hasn't had many opportunities today, so he's taking advantage of it. Strong hands on the ball. Just has that uncanny ability to make the last little adjustment on the ball. Gain a 22 there. Pump big down by Kaiser. Now he's going to Chris Brown and complete. Some interference there on Zach Dansel, but they're not going to get it. Because Kaiser is looking to that side on a double move, Chris Brown actually beat his guy, but the safety comes over the top to make the play. Because Kaiser's eyes are over there the entire time when you're doing a, it was an out and up move, a little go down, break to the outside, and then take off deep, it gave the safety Dansel time to get over there. for Kaiser, dwarfed by what he's been doing in recent games. Touchdown passes and the victory gets bit. He's been doing a lot of this. Running the football. Kaiser. Good game there. Let's 
let's revisit that penalty flag that was picked up just a couple of moments ago with Doug Rhodes. Doug, can you add anything here? Well, the rule says no opponent shall tackle or block the runner when he's clearly out of bounds or throw him to the ground after the ball becomes dead. And, and I believe the ball's dead and he does throw him. I, I think that call should have stood. But so they pick it up. You saw Clausen, you know, vehemently out there arguing it. I, I, maybe he was arguing the point that maybe, maybe he was acting and threw himself to the ground and sold the officials on the call. I, I don't know. Still a shake your head kind of moment. Third four. Kaiser looking it toward Corey Robinson, and there is a flag. Robinson, the popular target for Kaiser in situations just like that. The fade route to the end zone. Clausen says, man. That's interference. Defense number 11. 15 yard penalty. First down. Penalty on Deontay Austin. It was, it was good coverage on the play. And you're throwing basically a jump ball to Robinson, but the key is Robinson slows down to make a play on the ball. Austin continues with the arm extended. And there, right at the end, this little push, it looks more, that's one of those that may be a no call, but maybe a little bump by Robinson, but also there's contact because Robinson slowed down to make a play on the ball. That's why the, the, the call was made. All the way down to the five yard line, first and goal. Josh Evans is back flanking Kaiser. They fake it to him, and Kaiser is going to take it in for another score. Second rushing touchdown of the game for Kaiser. He opened the scoring back in the first quarter, and he caps off the six-play, 68-yard drive. Williams, number 30, coming down off the edge. Great patience by Kaiser on the play-action fake or the, the zone read fake and leaving it in the stomach of the back as long as he possibly could. Draws the defender in and gets around the corner. So Justin Yoon with Kaiser on the hold. 28-7, Notre Dame. So a big pass interference call against Wake Forest. Notre Dame takes advantage, set up at the five-yard line, and it is Deshaun Kaiser. Takes it in himself for the second time in this game to up the Notre Dame lead at 28-7. Notre Dame football on NBC is being brought to you by State Farm. Find your agent at statefarm.com. By Sprint, the official wireless sponsor of Notre Dame Athletics. By Sears, house experts for homeowners. And by United Healthcare, working to help make the system simpler. One of the great traditions here at Notre Dame to begin the fourth a few minutes ago, the students in the 18 12 overture taking a marshmallow break. The senior day tradition as well. Senior day at Notre Dame Stadium. Irish back up front by 21 with just under 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame trying to preserve this fourth ranking of the college football playoff, and that one goes out of bounds. And that'll bring it all the way out to the 35 yard line for Wake to begin. Their latest drive. 35-yard line, first down. Now you're at a point in the game where Wake may have to get out of their, their comfort zone. Wake Forest may have to go to strictly throwing the football, picking up the pace to try to get back into it. Down three touchdowns with only 10.58 to go. So now is when the floodgates could open as far as a pass rush, phase, the turnovers, if Wake Forest decides to make the effort to go after. And again, this is not an offense built on, you know, quick scores. I mean, as we've been documenting all game long, it is a possession type of oriented offense. That is what Dave Clawson has needed to do in his first two seasons as a head coach. But now the pace has got to be picked up a little bit as he needs some points. And that ball floated perfectly into K.J. Brent. There is a high-octane play to start this drive. Let's go! Great coverage by Cole Luke. He's in position, but Brent's a little bit taller and goes up and gets the ball at the high point. Cole Luke, not real comfortable in press coverage, so he kind of pressed bailed there, turned his hips. And sure enough, Brent goes up over him to make a big play. Wake Forest needs a quick score. They decide to throw one up down the field. I think he's a little bit on the shoulder there, Cole Luke, holding him down somewhat. No call on the play, and off he goes. He's got about five inches on the 5'11", Cole Luke. Brent stands six foot. That's a gain of 52, and it's all the way down to the Irish 13. So much for the slow, methodical offense, huh? Wolford, this time on the ground, they lose some yardage. Tyler 
Bell. This, this area of the field has been all out blitz for Brian Van Gorder and his defense for Notre Dame. Man to man coverage all over the field, send in the house. There are no running lanes. So if Wake Forest throws the ball in those situations, it's got to come out in a hurry. Kavari Russell saved a touchdown. As he got loose for 15 more. Donato, great job staying with his man, creates a seam, weight takes off. He's a kick return type kid. Real good quickness. So Wolford spreading it around to six different receivers. Both quarterbacks are in. You got Hinton, number two, who split to the near side, picked up by Cole Luke. Center is Wolford, and there goes Hinton in motion. And he loses the ball. Wolford does, he's able to recover it at the nine. Not a good time to lose the handle. Just lost it on his own. He actually gets the snap from center and loses it on the way back. Just slips out of his hands. Again, down on the goal line. They had a fourth and one and got stopped earlier. Now they were down on the goal line and out back to the nine. Remember earlier they were stopped on fourth and goal. And this time Bell trying to wiggle his way for a couple of hard-earned yards. They'll bring up third and goal as the Notre Dame defense rises. Max Redfield in there. This is a situation where they're going to go for it on fourth down. They're not looking for a field goal out of this drive. So they have, Wake Forest has two shots at it. Brian Van Gorder likes to be aggressive and blitz in these situations and go after people. They are seven yards away from trying to get back to within a couple of scores. Jalen Smith was right in his face mask. Fourth and goal from the seven. Jalen coming off the edge. Jalen Smith getting home. It's an all-out blitz. Not enough people to block. Both outside defenders. Greer Martini coming from the other side. Wolford does a good job of getting the ball out, but doesn't have a chance to complete it. So now a huge play for Rick Forrest to have any kind of shot in this game down by 21. Fourth and goal. And out. so important, they're going to call a timeout and talk things over. So Brian Van Gorder brought the house on third down. Does he do it again on fourth? So from an offensive standpoint, you want a quick throw, a fade, or a slant route, but also a pass pattern or something that is there if Notre Dame decides to pull out of it. So you want your big receiver on one side, one-on-one. -on -one. You can throw a fade or a slant to him, and you want some type of route on the opposite side of the field that may be good for zone coverage. But maybe it's the kind of situation where you bring in Hinton again. The, the, the extra athleticism in the red zone is always a positive, but because of the blitz situations, I mean, it doesn't matter how athletic you are. If the outside rushes are free, like they've been on the all-out blitz, the ball's got to go. And so Wolford is probably your best opportunity to make a quick decision with the ball in his hand and out. Again, it's a guessing game with what Van Gorder will do defensively. Again, it looks the same look. They may bring it again. More pressure for Wolford. Incomplete, and Notre Dame will take over. He tried to thread it in there to serenade, but Jalen Smith was right there. He has been all over the field tonight. Both, both linebackers come inside, and the pressure actually comes from the outside. And the ball's got to go. Very good coverage by Jalen Smith. Pulls out. He's one-on-one -on -one with the tight end. Favorite target, serenade. So the Irish take over at their own seven. 7.45 left, leading 28 to seven. From the 
the executive producer of Chicago Fire and Chicago PD comes the next great drama in the city of heroes, Chicago Med. Premieres Tuesday night, 8 central on NBC. There's a familiar skyline in these parts. It's about 100 miles down the road. The great city of Chicago. Beautiful night here in South Bend, Indiana, and Notre Dame taking over on downs as Wake Forest was unable to get it in again. Now Notre Dame just going to eat up some clock with a 21-point lead as Josh Adams has the carry out to the 10. Yeah, time of possession is nice, controlling the clock and running the football, but it comes down to getting points, and the Notre Dame defense has done a heck of a job in the red zone of shutting Wake Forest out of the end zone. Yeah, the story of missed opportunities as you look at the time of possession, still large margin in favor of Wake, but Wake's offense has taken four trips to the red zone and has been only able to come up with seven points. Second and seven, they give it to Adams again. He's got 136, but he lost a few there. The last time Notre Dame started a drive inside their own 10-yard line, it was Adams who took it 98 yards for the score. Again, the longest run in Notre Dame Stadium history. C.J. Proceis out of the game if you just joined us. Concussion-like symptoms after an awkward fall against Pitt late in the first quarter. So Josh Adams has taken over. 13 carries, 136 yards. Now Kaiser, second leading scorer as you look at Proceis on the sideline. So, you know, Proceis' injury is never a good time for a concussion-like situation as Kaiser floats it out. So Fuller, he doesn't have a lot of catches. That's just his third of the night. Still, though, always dangerous. And watch these moves. He is fearless on these. I mean, you've got to trust your offensive lineman, trust everyone in front of you, and hit it with full speed. He ends up going all the way back across the field. McGlinchey came all the way across the field and got a block from his right tackle spot. Three touchdowns last week for Fuller. Moved him up second all time in career touchdown receptions for Notre Dame. So now he only chases Michael Floyd. Josh Adams has the call again. Part of that is Will Fuller hasn't had an opportunity to touch the ball a lot tonight because they've been rolling. Wake Forest has been rolling coverage his way and trying to take him away. So when he has gotten the opportunities, he's made the most of it and wants to make it. He's probably very frustrated. And how about the nonchalant announcement by Will Fuller? After practice, he hasn't informed Brian Kelly. He says, that, you know what? I think I'm going to stay. I am going to stay for my senior year. I came here to graduate. This is what I'm going to do. It took a lot of people by surprise, but again, Stay tuned because sometimes these announcements can change. A lot can happen between now and next January. But Fuller for now says he wants to keep on the blue and gold for 2016. There's Corey Robinson and a flag comes in as he's interfered with by Watson. That's the second interference call on Watson today. This one almost appeared. Pass interference, defense number 25, 15-yard penalty, first down. This one almost appeared to me like Corey Robinson was expecting an underthrow and going to just jump up to catch it, and then the ball's down the field. But again, that's slowing down at the end of the route. Like here he starts looking for the ball early, and by slowing down, the defender makes contact with him. And by, I, I'll tell you what, even on that one, it's almost a little acting job by Corey because he's creating that contact. Corey Robinson does a great job of going up and high point balls and getting those those throws. And defensive backs get nervous and get their hands on them. Lawson has some quality time with the rest tonight, hasn't he? So first down and ten. Ball just shy of 34. Kaiser throws it a little bit behind Corey Robinson, but he's able to make the catch his first of the game. And again, Corey Robinson is one of those guys who's been taking a back seat to Will Fuller and Chris Brown with the excellent seasons those guys have been having. He has had not near as many as catches this year. That's just his 10th of the season for Robinson. Amir Carlisle was out in front throwing a block there, limped off the field. But as always, the Admiral, his dad, at every single game, home and away. Second down and six. Four and a half left. Kaiser's going to carry it again. A lot of carries. Tonight. That's his 12th 
about the game. But I don't think the offensive line of Notre Dame has dominated the game the way that Brian Kelly would have liked. And so as this game has gone on, Notre Dame has called more quarterback runs and gotten his own read involved. They gotten Kaiser involved in order to move the football. Yeah, a little bit surprising in as much as Kelly called last week's performance against Pitt the best overall performance by the offensive line. Of course, anchored there by Ronnie Stanley, who chose to return to Notre Dame. is the star of that wide receiving core. It is Chris Brown who is clearly the leader. Vocal and kind of gets all those wideouts together. Really does. You know, he's a hard worker. He works harder than anyone in practice and shows leads by example on the field. He, uh, he did a nice job there seeing a quarter blitz and, and in a third down situation and breaking it off. So he's smart too on the field. against Pitt last week. So if you're Notre Dame and you're looking at sitting at the number four spot nationally in the playoffs down the road, are you trying to finish this drive off and make it a 35-7 game instead of a 28-7 game just for show? I, you know, I think it's all, it all looks good at the end of the committee. You know, how, how many people on the committee watch every snap of the game and go through it or do they look at the final score and maybe watch some of it? They watch as much as they can, but there's just so many nuances to all these games going on across the country. A lot of football to be cited. Decided Ohio State, a 21-3 winner over Illinois. And then later tonight, Iowa taking on Minnesota, Baylor taking on Oklahoma. You know, and if you're looking at the schedule, I mean, there's been some criticism, you know, from some Notre Dame critics, you know, why, why are the Irish up there in the fourth position? You know, I think if you look at the fact that they just finished this five-game stretch, of course, the only loss to unbeaten Clemson, which if you have to have one blemish, that's as good as it could be, losing to Clemson on the road in the rain, two-point conversion away. Navy, still their only loss that Notre Dame handed them. Then they took on USC, beat the Trojans. The Trojans have won every game since the loss to Notre Dame, including an impressive win over Utah. Then they took on Temple, and still the Irish win is the only loss for Temple. And then Pitt last week has lost just three times, and those are some quality opponents that Pitt has lost to, which not only includes Notre Dame, but North Carolina and Iowa, which is unbeaten. So that's a pretty good schedule case for Notre Dame. And in the words of Brian Kelly, he has said, I will stack up our 12-game schedule against any 13-game schedule for a team that plays a conference championship game. Back in a moment. Six-year coach Brian Kelly about ready to move to 9-1 and one with two more games left to see where he stacks up in that college football playoff final shuffle. There's championship games taking place after Thanksgiving, that Thanksgiving weekend. Notre Dame taking on Stanford and Palo Alto after dealing with Boston College next week in the Shamrock Series. Tyler Newsom's punt, a good one. A minute and a half left. While Brian Kelly and the Irish get ready for Boston College next week, the road gets even tougher for Dave Foss. He's got number one Clemson next week for his Demon Deacons. Time of the game update presented by Sprint. Notre Dame defense has been on point tonight. Andrew Trumpetti takes one back. Interception return. Notre Dame defense also accounting for three sacks. Josh Adams and one run tonight. Raced into the record books. The longest rush in Notre Dame history, 98 yards. And Deshaun Kaiser has not, a, not only added from the air, but on the ground as well. And the story for Wake Forest, 0 for 3 on fourth down conversions. And not much luck at all in the red zone. 28-7, minute and a half left. Wake from its own six. Wolford has been withstanding that Notre Dame pressure all day and night, incomplete to Camp Serenade. 
And Jarrett Grace coming into the lineup on senior day for Notre Dame. And there is no one probably more appreciative just to be on the playing field. Last year when he was injured on senior day, he shook Brian Kelly's hand. And Kelly told him, let's do this again next year. He didn't know if he was going to be back after that multiple compound fracture in his leg, which occurred more than two years ago in the Arizona State game. After multiple surgeries and persevering, Jarrett Grace on senior day gets his chance. And remember, he was the man. He was the star linebacker who took over for Manti Teo in that spot until the injury is really set him back. And he's best friends with Joe Schmidt. They've helped each other through injuries. And as a sophomore, Grace was starting, and Schmidt was just a walk-on. Turn that all around, and, and it's just flipped reverse roles as one supported the other back then, and now Grace has been supporting Schmidt. It's been a fantastic relationship, roommates, best friends. Speaking of Manti Teo, you saw him now playing for the San Diego Chargers. So that was no small spot for Jerry Grace to take over when Manti Teo left, and again, that was the last time Notre Dame had a shot at a national championship. Nice to see Grace come up with a big play, a turnover or something. Over being chased by Shoemate, runs him out of bounds. You know he's going after it. He may take a few chances and abort the defense to go make a play. Thought it'd be interesting to kind of take a little comparison here from Manti Teo's 2012 unbeaten regular season team. And Look at the numbers there, points allowed per game. It was kind of a different way of getting things done. Obviously, that Notre Dame defense in 2012, giving up under 12 a game, was the strength of that team. Their offense was in a mode then of protect the football and let the defense win the game. Now, with a lot more confidence in the offense, they turn it loose on offense, and there's more possessions. And subsequently, they move this group of the scores. Serenade with the catch. Again, it was a few years back in the game against Wake Forest where Notre Dame won 38 to nothing. And then you had the upsets later that night. Remember Kansas State and Oregon losing and all of a sudden Notre Dame after the win over Wake Forest three years ago was the top ranked team in the country, ascended to the top of the polls and Brian Kelly had his shot at a national championship and then they were blown out by Alabama, but this is a much different team. Anybody that's watched this Notre Dame team knows how different it is. The depth, which has been on full display with six season-ending injuries to starters. We certainly hope that James on Wallow is okay. He's the latest Notre Dame starter to go down with a knee injury earlier in the game, but that's just as remarkable as anything, I think. Being in the fourth position, but doing it, losing all the starters they have. Kelly talked about his depth all spring and the way that they could come into this year and hit and be ready, and they've been able to step up. It's been next man up all year long. And next win on the board for the Fighting Irish. Fourth ranked in the playoffs. Move to 9-1. Wake Forest is on its way to its seventh straight losing season, falling to 3-7. and seven. Dave Lawson's underman team gave it a go for a while, and there is a beautiful shot of Joe Schmidt, Jared Grace, best friends, roommates. Both going through their own injuries. It was Joe Schmidt who had that ankle injury last year and worked his way back into the Notre Dame lineup. So senior day, a successful one in 2015 as we go down to Catholic. Dan, thank you. Coach, the senior class has now gone undefeated at home in 2012 and 2015. How proud are you of this group? I'm proud. I think, I think it's 21 home wins. I think it's the most of any senior class. So uh, very proud of them. Uh, you know, very proud of what they've done over the long period of time. And I think their legacy is they've set a, uh, a bar that um, it's pretty hard to beat. Your defense held Wake Forest to seven points. What impressed you the most of their performance? Uh, I just think that they just kept playing. Um, you know, they had a number of fourth down stops and, and kept competing. Um, you know, at times, um, you know, we weren't as uh, sharp uh, as we have been during the year, but uh, these are the kind of games you got to win. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you. Dan? Thanks, Catherine. As Brian Kelly now has two of those perfect home records, as Notre Dame now has three perfect home records in the last 26 seasons. So that is a rarity as well. Running the table at home, and today on Senior Day, 
the alma mater even more significant and emotional for especially the seniors who played their final game at Notre Dame Stadium. It is a quote unquote home game for the Irish next week at Fenway Park, but this is the last one here for Sheldon Day and company. says the Irish win it 28 to 7. And now, Doug, uh, things heat up, to say the least. It's uh, another very underdog team at Boston College next week at Fenway Park. Uh, Notre Dame just keeps their foot on the pedal here, and then looming is the, uh, the tilt in Palo Alto against Stanford, which just may be the playing game for Stanford, obviously, if they're going to get into the mix as well. Well, that's the marquee game for, for Notre Dame. Next week's game against Boston College should be very similar to what they saw tonight. A team that, at Boston College not real confident in their offense. They try to possess the ball and work the clock, rely on their number one ranked defense yardage-wise. Uh, they're very stubborn on defense. So it could be the same type of time of possession type of game that Notre Dame's going to have to keep from making mistakes. You made an interesting point earlier when you're talking about you know either having a championship game or in the case of Notre Dame, they do not. What does that do to the committee and other people watching when Notre Dame just is... is is not playing and the other teams are and maybe look impressive in the championship well, game. We've all, we've all seen it over the years that on bye weekends, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind in the pollsters over the, over the years. And now the committee, the last impression they w will have are these conference championship games. And how impressed were they by the SEC champion and the Big Ten champion? Uh, Big 12 doesn't have that game either. So the Big 12 champ, and Notre Dame will be on the sideline watching in the last impressions from someone else. Yeah, it's the old what have you done for me lately analogy as we go back down to Catherine. Dan, senior captain, Sheldon Day joining me. Sheldon, uh, the game has come and gone now. Four tackles for you, two for loss, three quarterback hurries, but the emotions in playing in this game, what did this day mean to you? Oh, very, very special day for me and my family. Last home game, especially go out with a win and be undefeated my senior year at home, it's definitely a big deal. What will you remember most from this game? Romeo Quarr's three sacks. You know, uh, he's a good guy. I've been working hard all year, and it seems like everything's falling into place for him. This senior class has gone undefeated at home now in 2012 and 2015. How proud are you of this group that you've spent four years with? So proud. You know, uh, we, we grind every day. We came in as freshmen with a, a goal to win a national championship, and now uh, it's, it's getting closer and closer, so we're going game by game, day by day, and hopefully we can get our vision and keep our goal. We spent some time with you yesterday with your mom. You had a chance to hug her before the game. What was that moment like for you too? Oh man, so special to kind of share that moment with my mom because she she's done everything for me. She's a great lady and she's one of my biggest supporters. All right, Sheldon, congratulations. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Thank you. And there All is right, Dan. a live shot, Catherine, of Carol Boyd. And if you missed the pregame with Carol and the choreographed hug with her son Sheldon, you missed a great highlight moment. That's my baby, Sheldon Day, on Senior Day and the Irish.